Welcome to lectures and interviews about leadership for sustainability. I'm Bruce Hall. You're gullible. You'll believe just about anything. And that makes it difficult for you to influence or collaborate with other people, especially if they disagree with you. Do you remember the elephant from the last episode? It makes most of your decisions based on emotion, preconception, and generalizations. It's really hard to change the elephant's direction once a decision has been made. Most often, the rider just goes along with whatever direction you're going, rationalizing and justifying whatever decision you made, and that opens the door for confirmation bias. People believe most anything that makes them appear consistent and reasonable and justifies their elephant's quick decision. For example, a heavy coffee drinker will look for and remember evidence that confirms caffeine is not linked to health risks, and a climate change skeptic will find and remember instances when climate science has changed and conclude it is often wrong. You have to actively fight your confirmation bias by looking for contrary information and waiting to form positions before you've considered the facts. Filter bubbles support confirmation bias. Only information that supports your positions gets through. Internet search engines push confirmatory information to you. They personalize your requests based on what you've liked and clicked in the past. You probably construct your filter bubbles by subscribing to specific news feeds that support your assumptions and values, and by socializing with like-minded people who find and share information. Remember, your elephant's rider is more of a lawyer than a scientist. It's just looking for information to support your case. And that's confirmation bias. We are social animals. We identify with and protect the group to which we belong. Doing so enhances our success because those people will look out for us and ours. Likewise, we're programmed to recognize and be cautious of outgroup members because they could harm our group and our offspring. When our identity gets triggered, we use confirmation bias and any other means at our disposal to defend against the threat to our identity. All kinds of things can signal group identity. Early in human history, when evolution selected for this trait, it was the characteristics that signaled our family and tribe. We knew who was us and who was them. Now we identify with groups defined by political party, citizenship, gender orientation, educational background, and favorite media outlet. Sustainability topics that signal group affiliation and trigger identity protective reasoning include global trade, government regulation, and climate change. Let's dig in for an example. But to fully appreciate this example, you have to recognize the power of our inner voices to capture attention. When you talk to someone, they are not just listening to you, they are also listening to their inner voice. Likewise, when someone is talking to you, you are also listening to your inner voice. Whenever you talk to another person, there are actually three conversations going on. One inside your head, one inside their head, and the one you both hear. Okay, back to climate change. Climate triggers identity protective reasoning in both climate action skeptics and climate action advocates. Imagine the mind of a skeptic when talking to a climate action advocate. At first mention of climate change, rather than focus on the facts being presented, the skeptic hears their own internal voice, their rider, reinforcing beliefs and values they feel are under threat. For example, the skeptic's inner voice will be arguing that the person explaining climate science is an out-of-touch, overeducated, professor elitist who disregards the value of hard-working citizens, that God has dominion over Earth and humans can't change climate, and to argue otherwise is blasphemy. The government is already too big, and solutions to climate change such as cap-and-trade will make government bigger and even more of a threat to national security. Existing government regulations already stifle business innovation and decrease market efficiencies, and that will threaten my retirement savings and harm America's future, and on and on and on. Meanwhile, none of the climate action advocates' facts were heard. The climate sect skeptic just rehearsed and reinforced pre-existing beliefs. This is one reason why, as we'll discuss in the next episode, facts rarely matter. Okay, now for the biggest challenge of all, echo chambers. Echo chambers amplify identity protective reasoning. An echo chamber actively undermines anyone who disagrees with community policies and positions or threatens group identity. Dissenting voices are not just excluded, as in the case of a filter bubble, they're actively discredited. Again, take climate change as an example. If a climate denier is wrong about climate change, the risk to them is minimal because there is very little one person can do, and even a skeptic 
If they had emitted fewer greenhouse gases, the impact on global climate change would be minimal. However, the risk of going against the tribe is huge. If the climate skeptic questions the party line, they risk getting shunned and rejected by the group. They stand to lose friends, family, jobs, and reputation. For example, when conservative South Carolina Congressman Bob Ingalls came out in support of climate action, he was subjected to scathing critiques by conservative commentators and lost his next election. Echo chambers create major barriers to working across differences because collaboration becomes working with the enemy and compromise becomes conceding to the enemy. People are pre-wired this way and it complicates collaboration. In the next episodes, we turn to some solutions. Mm-hmm.